But I got a quick question for you. How do you know what the cylinder is designed for? How do we know that that steel 100 there is used for scuba? How do we know that that 40 foot cubic bottle there is used for oxygen? Is there a way that we can uh, look at a cylinder immediately and tell what it's used for? What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marine. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now I've got several different cylinders here that I'm getting vised up for customers and getting them back in service. But I got a quick question for you. How do you know what the cylinder is designed for? How do we know that that steel 100 there is used for scuba? How do we know that that 40 foot cubic bottle there is used for oxygen? Is there a way that we can uh, look at a cylinder immediately and tell what it's used for? So that's gonna be the question we're gonna try to answer today. And I'm gonna be showing you different valves as well that you may not have seen before here in the scuba industry. The reason I wanna do this is there's a lot of used cylinders on the market that are still in great shape and there's a lot of great deals that you can get a used cylinder for, but you need to make sure you know what you're looking for prior to buying that cylinder so that you don't get skimped when it comes time to get it serviced. So with that being said, let's jump into today's video. So as I stated in the intro, how do we know that this steel 100 or this steel 80 or this aluminum 63 or this aluminum 40 here, how do we know that they are designed to be used for scuba purpose? How do we know that they wasn't designed to be used for oxygen service? Is it the color? A lot of people would say, well, it's green. It's usually green and yellow. It's going to be for oxygen or for nitrox. Or what about a silver one? Or what about a white bottle over there? Or one of these darker gray? How do we know that they are designed for scuba? Well, in short, it's the valve. So if we take a close look at this valve here, don't pay too much attention to the den versus yoke or whether it's 200 versus 300. This happens to be a 300 bar here. Don't pay too much close attention to that. Just look at the design itself. You've got an outlet or what we call an orifice and you got an on and off knob, nothing fancy. But because it is either going to be den versus yoke, we understand that that is designed for scuba use. Air, nitrox, trimix, heliox, whatever. It's designed for scuba use. To where if we go over, say, to this oxygen bottle here, one of the things that you'll notice is the valve is a little bit different. This is what's called a pillar valve. So unlike in scuba where we had J valves and K valves, this is actually a pillar valve. And I'm going to show you a different example of one of these here shortly. But if we also notice, it is still an A-clamp tile system as far as how the regulator is attached. But it's a different orifice. So it's specifically engineered and designed for oxygen use, not scuba use. So that is one of the first things that we do whenever we look at a cylinder to make a classification. I know that steel 100 is designed for scuba because it's got a standard 200 bar, nothing fancy, K valve on it to where this one has a pillar valve. So I know it's designed for oxygen use. I don't look too much at the colors. I look at the valves themselves. Now I am going to show you a couple of different valves here and I'm going to show you the differences in these valves and I'm going to show you how you can kind of date how old a cylinder is as well. So moving over here, I have two standard yoke valves or A-clamp style valves, nothing fancy with these. Yes, this one is a J valve. If you've not seen our video, I'll link it up top where we talk about J valves, kind of their history, but it is still an A-clamp style model. It's got a yoke fitting here, got a simple on and off, and of course this one has a reserve switch. This is a standard K valve, nothing fancy. It's got an A-clamp or a yoke fitting there, simple on and off knob, nothing really fancy. You will notice they were both three quarter inch necks. Now this is going to be something that we're going to focus on towards the end of this video, but they are three quarter inch necks. That simply means any cylinder has got a three quarter inch fitting. I can simply screw it in there. Real simple. So if you got an older cylinder that has a J valve, you want to swap it over to a K very easily and pop the valve out, put you a new one in, boom, now you got a K valve. Real short and sweet to the point. But let's take a quick look at this one. This particular one here is a 300 bar high pressure den. And what do I mean by den? Well, notice it's not an A-clamp orifice. The, the regulator actually screws in. Easy way to remember it. Yoke screws on, den screws in. But this happens to be a 300 bar. And notice the depth there. If we look at this one, this is a 200 bar. Now, yes, this is a Pro K, but I can pull this insert out here and this becomes a den. But if we compare the size, 
and I'll try to hold it just right. Look how much deeper that 300 bar goes. And one thing that sets the 300 bars as separate or aside, you can't insert, you, you can, you'll screw in there, but you can't put that insert into the 300 bar and then get a proper fitting if you're trying to do yoke. So the DIN fittings that were 300 bars are obviously designed for higher pressures, but that's not the only difference. If we take a close look at the difference between say a 200 bar versus a 300 bar, look at the fittings on the threading. The 200 bar obviously is a three quarter inch. It's a lot bigger. And I know it's kind of reversed here, but that's a three quarter. On the 300 bar, this is a seven eighths. So we know seven eighths is bigger than three quarters. Scooby industry kind of gets things backwards, but this is a seven eighths fitting here. Now the cool thing about the seven eighths fitting it is still sealed with an O-ring. So all I got to do is replace that O-ring and I can screw it straight in. And I want to show you a representation here. If I take the 200 bar, I, it'll very easily screw in there to start twisting it. However, if I try to set it in a 7 8 it don't go in, don't fit. To where I can take the 7 8 and it will screw right in there. So once I get it lined up, start screwing. And see if we can get it started there. It will fit directly into the threads. There, it finally caught. I can screw it right in, right? Well, if I try to take the 7 8 and put it into a 3 quarter, watch this just goes right down. The threads don't even line up. So that's the difference between a 200 bar and a 300 bar. Now somebody's going to say, but wait a minute, here you've got a 200 bar yoke with a 7 8 fitting. No, this is a 200 bar yoke fitting, but it actually has a tapered. This is a half inch and you can kind of see how it gets bigger and bigger as it goes up. This is a tapered fitting. Now, a neat little fun fact about these, these valves do not seal with O-rings. They actually seal with this pipe tape here. And I actually have a cylinder that is still in service today. It's still hydro, it's still Viz, that has this tapered fitting on it. So let's take a close look. This is an older steel 72 here. And of course, this is our shop tank. This is what we use for air here in the workshop. And if we take a close look, you'll notice, look at the valve first. Standard K valve, don't even have a reserve switch, so we know it's not a J valve, nothing fancy, but it's got the half inch fitting there that is tapered. And you'll see the pop tape that's on it as well. It looks like it doesn't screw all the way down, that's because it doesn't. It's tapered as you screw it in, it gets bigger and fatter, and of course eventually it gets sealed. So yes, these are still in service today. We actually see quite a bit of them. I'm actually going to show you another one here just in a minute, because earlier I said what classifies a cylinder for scuba, and we said the valve, right? So these are obviously scuba valves. This is an O2 valve. Well, have you ever seen an O2 valve or a pillar valve for scuba. I've actually got one. Here's an, another old steel 72. This is an old Healthways scuba cylinder here. But look at the valve. It is a half inch fitting. You can see the pipe tape on it. It's a tapered fitting. It is a pillar valve, so very similar to that valve right there. But it has an A-clamp or a yoke fitting on it. All right, so this was used back in the days of double hose regulators that slid on. It's got your pillar fitting there. It's got your on and off knob. So it's a neat little system there. It's got the same indention there in the back for the yoke screw to the mount to. And let's see if we can figure out where this one's from. This is an old, it says Healthway Scuba LA California on it. Okay, so that's pretty neat. And if I'm not mistaken, this cylinder is from, I see a 74, I see a 66. I don't know if the camera's catching this or not. Looks like 1950, can barely make it out. Looks like 1958 is where does this cylinder's from. So well before there were BCs, obviously, and obviously there's no BC on it. It's just a harness and a uh, some type of plate system. But that's really neat to show you guys the differences in the cylinders that make them scuba is not so much the size nor the material. It's what the purpose of the valve was designed for. So obviously these are all designed for scuba. Yes, they're all in service. Even J valves, even K valves, even or 200 bar K valves, 300 bar uh, K valves, and then even the half inch tapers 
are still in service today. People still use them. No, they're not common. No, it's going to be rare if you see them. You're going to see a bunch of old school divers use them, but they're still in service. We still use one on this cylinder over here for our little shop tank. Um, and I've got tons of cylinders, guys. Here's an old steel cylinder as well that had the half inch. You can see this one's rusted. This one's out of service, but it's still a half inch fitting there uh, we use this to teach tank classes all the time which are pretty cool for us but i just wanted to show you the differences in the cylinders and the valves and the different classifications that we actually use to say what it is so here you go guys that's how we determine what type of cylinder or what the cylinder is actually used for is it used for scuba is it used for say oxygen service or for medical purposes it's all based off the valve itself and there's different types of valves now the three different types of valves i didn't show you in this video of course are the manifolded valves which you've seen in plenty of videos um, i didn't show you an h valve or a y valve i'll try to show you pictures of them up here so you can kind of see those those are used to simulate doubles using a uh, single cylinder that way you have a reserve if you need to or if one post fails you can obviously switch over to get back to the surface but they're still typically going to be a three-quarter inch which is the standard for the scuba industry seven eighths are for your 300 bar high pressures 3500s and up and of course you have the half inch tapered valves which you can still get today and you can still get them serviced and you can still use them there's nothing wrong with them but how does this apply to you when you go to purchase a used cylinder that is something you might want to look for if you go to get an older steel cylinder, like maybe one of these steel 80s right here, those are high pressure cylinders, 3500s. You're gonna have a 300 bar den, and if you don't dive a den system, if you dive a yoke system, you're not gonna be able to use that valve. And a lot of people say, well, I'll just swap it out for a yoke. And it's very difficult to find a standard yoke, even these right here. This is a 300 bar with a 7 8 you're not going to find the yoke with the 7 8 You might find a yoke that's got the half inch tapered, but you probably would not be able to find the 7 8 valve. So that's something that you might want to consider when you're buying new cylinders. Make sure you know what you're looking at. A lot of shops like ours will actually help you. If you see a used cylinder, maybe on Facebook Marketplace or something like that, give the shop a call, send them an email and say, hey, I found this. Is this something that you guys can service for me? Or do you know a place where I can get it serviced before you make that purchase? Sometimes it is better and cheaper to buy brand new than used, but I'll be the first one to tell you, I buy used cylinders almost every week. If I come across one, that I know is good in service and that we can use and it can be profitable, I will purchase it and I would encourage you guys to get used cylinders when it's a good deal for you. Just make sure you know what you're looking for and reach out to your local centers and say, hey, is this something that's serviceable? Can you do it? Or do you know somebody that can service it as well? But guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was eye open. I hope it was kind of a history lesson to you. If you did like this video, you will see more content like it. Give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you got any questions, Drop me a comment down below. I'll try to find a video that can help you out or I'll try to make one myself. And check out other dive channels as well. Um, there's a lot of great, Alec Pierce Scuba is a great channel as well to get out there and look at this older scuba equipment to learn more, gain more knowledge and become a better diver as well. So definitely check out those other channels and I think you'll be a much better diver for it. But guys, I got a ton of uh, cylinders. I've got to get vizzed and get filled up today for customers. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop off here to our next one. Take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.